Hey everybody, Rob D'Alessio, Taste of Retirement, and what we are doing today is the five classical mother sauces. These are the basis of French cuisine. You've got espagnol, you've got velouti, you've got tomato sauce, you've got uh, bechamel, and then you've got hollandaise. So, come on, let me show you how we do it. Espanol sauce, one of the classical five mother sauces that are like the basis of all French cuisine. Uh, just absolutely amazing. Now, with the five classical sauces, sometimes you use just the sauce itself, but oftentimes it becomes something else. So Espanol sauce might not be familiar to you, but then it becomes a demi-glace, which maybe you'll do a veal chop on it, or maybe a lamb chop, which you may or may not see. But well, how we get started is what we've got is we've got three cups of a beef stock. I like to buy stock, not broth, because it just has a little bit more flavor to it. And then uh, some herbs. So what we have is Italian flat leaf parsley, some bay leaves, some thyme, a couple black peppercorns. And then we've got a couple ounces of clarified butter, unsalted, of course. You can always add more salt later. And then some basic uh, white flour. Now, when you make a roux, which is what we're getting ready to do, you have to have equal parts fat and flour. That's kind of how it works. A roux is fat and flour. Uh, we also have got diced uh, celery, carrots, and onions, which is a mirepoix. So it's the base of a lot of different ingredients. And then, of course, some tomato paste. So how we're going to get started, I've got the pan going. I'm going to add the butter. And then once it starts to bubble, then we'll add the uh, your mirepoix. Let that saute for a little bit, and then we're gonna add in the flour. You can already, it's, it, it adds so much aroma, like it's just so aromatic. But anyway, you wanna keep going. After a little while, the onions will start to get translucent. That's when we're gonna add the flour. Now, if you've ever made, if you've never made roux before, don't worry, you're gonna burn it. I've burned a roux. People burn roux all the time. So if you burn it, just toss it out and start over. So now it's starting to get a little bit more golden in color. Like I said, we just gotta keep going, keep stirring. And then it'll brown up here in a little bit, and then um, that's when all the magic will happen. Okay, so it's starting to it's starting to turn a little bit more of a golden color, uh, browning, if you would. And, and then what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and add the beef stock in. You just pour that in. Love that sound. Never gets old. Pour that in. We're gonna add what we call the aromatics in, and then you want to stir that up to make sure you get all those clumps from that roux out of there. It smells unbelievable. So you stir that up, and then last thing, you're gonna add about two tablespoons or so of tomato puree, uh, tomato paste. Doesn't have to be exact, but that'll add a really nice deep flavor to it, also a little bit of color to it, and, and then we'll go from there. Now, um, you're gonna bring this up to a simmer, not necessarily a full-blown boil, and then all you're gonna do is just let it go. You know what I mean? It's gonna take about an hour, maybe 45 minutes, if you, you know, you're lucky, I don't know. But what you wanna do is you wanna reduce it down. I wish you could smell this right now. It's unbelievable. You should be able to scratch and sniff your phone. It'd be amazing. But anyway, let it go. And then it's going to reduce down by half. And then we're done. All right. So it's reduced down by about half of what it was. And now what we're going to do is we're basically going to take a fine mesh strainer, put it over a bowl, and we're going to pour it through there to strain all of the uh, solid materials, if you would, out. And then that way, um, you're left with just the sauce. So just take it off the burner, pour it through. We'll just let that go. It'll come through. Give it some time. So that's good there. All right, so there we go. Strained it off. We've got the Espanol sauce. Now, again, this is just a base. It's a brown sauce, right? So you're going to make something with it later. Maybe like lamb chops or, or an asabuco or something like that. So what you can do is you can add ingredients, right? So if you want like a veal demi-glace, you'll get some veal base, you'll put it in, back in the pan, and you wanna keep on reducing it down. We'll probably do that a little bit later. We'll make a demi-glace out of it also. And then we're just gonna put it back in and then just keep on reducing it down. And then we'll, you'll get what you actually want. But that's Espanol, one of the five classical sauces. Okay, so for this sauce, we're doing bechamel. Bechamel is a creamy sauce, generally with milk, flour, and butter, but it wouldn't be a taste of retirement if we didn't twist it up a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna render out some of the fat from a really, really thick cut bacon. You could buy pancetta if you wanted, maybe even some guanciale, um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a mac and cheese later on, and, and so I want some of that bacon flavor to it. So bechamel is very, very easy. You might be more familiar with it because um, you add 
cheese to it and different things like that, and then it becomes Mornay sauce, which basically Mornay is, you know, you get a Welsh rarebit, or you've seen one of our old episodes where we did the Kentucky hot brown, then that's where you come up with a Mornay, but Mornay sauce. But what we're gonna do is, we're gonna do a mac and cheese, an amazing mac and cheese today. So I've got the bacon, um, I've got it cut very, very thick, and bacon sometimes is kind of a challenge to cut, so what I do is I throw it in the freezer for a few minutes, just to kind of firm it up and then cut it and then let it get to room temperature. Got the skillet on medium high and we're just gonna put the bacon in there and just love that sound. And then just render the fat out. And then, so once it's cooked through, then I'll take the bacon back out, but we're gonna leave the fat in the pan to make our sauce. So when we make a bechamel, we've talked about this in many times, but we always use an unsalted butter because you can control your salt content. But obviously we're using bacon, which is pretty salty. So you definitely want to make sure that you're using an unsalted butter for this because of that. Um, but anyway, so we're just going to take the, the, the bacon out, hold it to the side, we'll use it later. And then you want to leave all that fat in there. You know, oftentimes people get intimidated when you're talking about like classical sauces and different things like that. Like the word bechamel, like, oh my gosh, that's intimidating. And it's not. The sauces are actually really, really simple. They're just a base for other items that we're gonna cook later. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add the butter in. Let that melt down a little bit. And when that's finally fully melted, then I'll add in the flour. We'll stir it up, get the good roux going, add in the milk, and then we're done. I mean, who doesn't like butter and bacon fat? I mean, come on. All right, that's melted down. You want to hurry up, too, because you don't want to burn the butter. Now we've got the flour in there. Make sure you scrape it off the bottom of the pan. And that'll cook. If you ever made a sausage gravy, this is kind of exactly how that starts. And we add the milk in. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the heat down because with the cast iron skillet, there's enough of that retained heat that it'll do everything we want it to. But just keep stirring. So you'll see some of the clumps of the flour. Now, it's all gonna vary. How, how thick you want the sauce means how much flour do you put in. If you want a, a, a sauce to be a little more runny, then you do less flour. If you want it to be a little uh, more thick, you do more flour. And there you have it. That's the bechamel sauce. Twisted, of course, because we're tasting retirement, and that's what we do. All right, next up, five classical sauces. We're doing veluti sauce. Some people say velouté sauce. Tomato, tomato, potato, potato. I don't really care. You just need to eat it and make sure it's delicious. So what we're going to do is basically we're substituting out all the sauces have a lot of similarities to them. Um, when we did the bechamel, we had milk, you know, fat and flour. This time we're doing chicken stock. So basically it's like a cup and a half of chicken stock, some flour, unsalted butter. We always use unsalted butter so we can control the salt content. But anyway, butter goes in as it starts to melt down. Then we'll add the flour in. We'll make the roux. Then we add the stock in, thicken it up, salt and pepper to taste, and then it's done. All right, the butter's melted down. We'll add the flour in. And just gonna wanna mix that up. Make sure it's all incorporated. And what you wanna do is you wanna cook that up a little bit, start to where it starts to change color a little bit. Then we'll add the uh, vegetable stock in, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and we're done. All right, so the roux started to turn more of that golden color. You don't wanna go too far dark with it, otherwise you're gonna make it like a gumbo base, but uh, you don't wanna go into like an amber or even like a dark chocolate or anything like that. So it's just starting to turn a little bit more golden. And that's when we're gonna go ahead and add in the chicken stock. You wanna stir that up. Make sure all that roux gets incorporated throughout. And what you wanna do is it's just gonna thicken up to the consistency that you like, and then the sauce is done. All right, so the, the sauce is thickened up to about where I like it. So the velouti is just about done. You can honestly see there's, there's a nice sheen on top of it. And then if you take the back of the spoon, it coats the spoon nicely. It's done. Now, we're gonna use that for something awesome in a little bit, so. 
All right, tomato sauce, one of the five classical sauces. You can look up here and you'll see different recipes that we use with this sauce. Um, but it's just a base, right? It can become Creole sauce. It be become a base for maybe doing a bolognese or like a lasagna, different things like that. But it's very simple. So what we have is some San Marzano whole peeled tomatoes that I've crushed up. I've got some tomato sauce. I've got some chopped parsley. I've got some onions, garlic, uh, black pepper, kosher salt, and then of course crushed red pepper because we twist things up around here. Uh, but what you want to do is you get a little bit of oil in the pan. And I generally use a canola oil or you can use a grapeseed oil, something like that. Because if you use olive oil, it can smoke up on you too much. And the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to put the onions in. Love that. And what you're going to do is you're going to saute those for about five minutes or so. You just want to get them, you want to get them to where they're a little bit translucent. So uh, onions are like the base of everything. You always see how these people say they don't like onions. But yet, it's in like every tomato sauce, so if they like pasta, they definitely eat onions, they just may not know it. You can see the onions are starting to brown up. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw the garlic in, but garlic will burn on you very, very quickly, so we're only gonna put it in there like 30 seconds, and then start adding the tomatoes. You know, I just love, you know, you can buy jarred sauces and different things like that, and that's fine, there's some good ones out there. But if you just spent a little bit more time and used fresh ingredients, the flavors are just so much better, and honestly better for you. Um, but you know, cooking's just not too hard, you just gotta spend a little bit of time on it. Okay, so the onions are just about done. We're gonna throw the garlic in. That's about a tablespoon of garlic, which is a lot of garlic, but I'm Italian, man. I love garlic, so keeps the vampires away too. But you put the garlic in, like I said, it'll burn really quick on you. So you go about 20, 30 seconds, and then we'll cool it down with the tomatoes. Because if you end up burning the, bar the garlic, it gets really bitter tasting. No good. Like I said, that's San Marzano tomatoes. They come from California. In my opinion, the, the best tomatoes you can get. All right. So we're gonna let that come up to temp. Once it starts to bubble a little bit, we'll add in the tomato sauce as well. Okay. All right, so the tomatoes, they're boiling, and this, this is just happiness, just coming right at you all day long. It just smells unbelievable. One of my favorite smells there are. Now we're gonna add the tomato sauce. And then we're not gonna add all this parsley, but we'll add, you know, about a quarter cup or so of parsley. That's Italian flat leaf parsley that I chopped myself. I've chopped parsley a lot <laughs> over the years. Mix that in. We're gonna season with some salt and pepper. Cause I don't know where you come from, but where I come from, my tomatoes don't come seasoned. There's pepper. And then now we're gonna kick it up a notch with some crushed red pepper. A little goes a long way with that. Mix all that up. And then what we're gonna do is reduce the heat, and then we wanna reduce the sauce down. All right, so everything's all done now, it's incorporated. You can let it simmer longer if you want, or you can be done. We basically took the volume in half, which obviously thickened the sauce, but it also adds a lot more flavor, it makes the, the, the complexity of the flavors much more. Uh, it smells absolutely fantastic. So that's it, tomato sauce. On to the next one. All right, hollandaise sauce. This is the one they make me do all the time because it's my favorite. It's not really my favorite, but it is really, really good. And, and you know, people get intimidated about hollandaise sauce, but it's pretty simple actually. And just so you know, if the sauce breaks on you, you can bring it back by adding an additional egg yolk. But ingredients, fresh lemon juice. I've got three egg yolks, a little bit of white wine vinegar, and some water. This of course is melted unsalted butter because we're gonna add salt afterwards and then some cayenne pepper. So what I've got, I've got about an inch of water going in the pan and we're gonna do what's called a double boiler. You put a, a, a metal bowl over the top of it and that allows that steam to get nice and hot. One thing is, if you cook it too fast, then the eggs are gonna scramble on you. And I mean, scrambled eggs are fine, but that's not what we're trying to do here. Because holiday sauce is, is it's an emulsion, okay? So you're actually combining the oil and the solids together, and then that's what makes it delicious. Now, what we're gonna do later on is we're actually gonna turn the holiday sauce into Bernays. 
If you've ever had like a filet Oscar or anything like that, uh, Bernays is amazing and it goes on top of meat or fish. It's just absolutely delicious, even chicken. Uh, but anyway, so we've got the pan, we've got the water going. Let's put the eggs in. I like to whisk them just a little bit at the beginning, just to kind of get them going. And then what you want to do is you want to put them over the heat. And then this is this is the part that nobody really likes. You just got to keep going. Now, that'll get a little hot on you, so what you want to do then is every now and then just take it off the heat. But the one thing you want to make sure that you do is continue to whisk the whole time. It'll wear you out a little bit, but that's okay. Continue to whisk, continue to whisk. And eventually what'll happen is it'll increase in volume. Normally when you make the rest of the sauces, we're actually talking about reducing it in volume, which adds flavor. Here we're actually increasing in volume. Let's add the lemon juice. And then you're gonna add the butter, but you're gonna add it very, very slowly. Otherwise the sauce can break on you. You definitely don't want it to break. If it breaks, like I said, you'll know what'll happen. Breaking the sauce means like it separates and you get the solids and the liquids just separate. And so you'll know if that happens. And if it does, no big deal. Just add another egg yolk, maybe a little bit more water and keep whisking. But now you can see that it's starting to get really creamy. It's gotten much thicker. We're almost done with the emulsion. Okay, so that's that. Then what we'll do is a little bit of salt for taste. And add a little bit of cayenne pepper, which that'll actually help with adding color and flavor, of course. And we just made hollandaise sauce. Take that off the heat because it's done. We don't need to cook it anymore. There you have it, holiday sauce. Wasn't that hard, was it? And there you have it, the five classical mother sauces. Baluti, bechamel, hollandaise, tomato, and espanol. If you liked what you saw today, don't forget, go to our page, like and subscribe, and you'll see amazing content just like this. I'm Rob D'Alessio, and that was A Taste of Retirement.